Hey, good afternoon. And um, I, I came across this line in one of the reports that I was reading, which says a more engaged patient is almost always a more healthier patient. And as the world is making a move from looking at patient just as patient um, to more as a consumer, because it's a, it's a difficult mindset. Uh, a patient experience is is difficult to be seen as something where you would like to attach consumerization to it. However, uh, today's consumers are or patients are more aware. They would want to have control of their health. They are more comfortable taking decisions about what type of treatment, which medication, which location, and what side effects are they comfortable with. So alongside proliferation of data, there's also a great sense of awareness that is now increasing in the patient community. Now why am I talking about patient? Because pharma as an industry has long evolved from just being seen as a product company to now going beyond the pill. And if I talk about my views on digital transformation that will drive the, the next phase of growth, the frontier, is really about moving on from patient engagement to becoming more patient-centric. And there's a huge difference between patient engagement and patient-centric. Patient engagement, a company would say, hey, we have got a portal, we have got an app, we are engaging with patients, we have got data coming in. And that really is patient engagement. It doesn't stop that. A patient-centric organization is the one where pharma and the other stakeholders in the ecosystem, which would include payers, providers, patients and their families, and other academias are coming together and thinking about what really matters to the experience of the patient and their families. And it hasn't been really easy for farmers here in India or elsewhere globally to be able to do that. There are multiple challenges. Number one, a study from Deloitte suggests that uh, patients and consumers are more comfortable sharing data with um, anybody but pharma. And why is that so? Because they're not aware how the data is going to be used by the pharma companies. If you see the health apps, there are top six health apps, but none of them are from pharma. Then why is this divide between consumers or patients wanting to share the data but not with pharma? There's a mindset challenge. Consumers are not aware of how the data with pharma companies are going to be utilized. Second is about regulatory policy. There's a lot of digital interventions that have gone in, and the policies are conducive, but there's a long way to go. We talk about AI and ML, but this is a highly regulated industry where if somebody asks uh, a chatbot, is there any side effect of this drug? And the answer, no, there is no side effect. The patient is okay, but the regulators are not okay. So there is a lot of regulatory policies about how we use uh, the ethical tech. And there are still organizations sitting on the fence of whether we actually get fully into it or we wait and watch. The third is really the talent and the, and the construct of the pharma industry. It is very difficult for pharma industry to, to attract talent that is digital native. And why is that? Because everybody would think from bench to bedside, it takes years for a drug to get travels that journey. And once it is there, it probably is going to not change. So, so what's the change that I'm going to drive as a digital enthusiast? Um, and, and that has been something which is, is a difficult part for all of the pharma industries to, to attract the talent. Having the right culture within the organization to be able to allow fail fast, automation, innovation, and experimentation Experimentation has also been a challenge. If you put these four things together, it is difficult for us to move faster and say we have been innovative around patient centricity. Um, although there are challenges, there are levers and strategies attached to it. In our opinion, if an organization wants to make move and strides in this direction, they need to be able to have clarity around how do I transcend the trends that are happening in the market? Metro trends, micro trends, wild cards, and what strategy should I employ? That's point number one. Second, 
for those trends, do I have the right tools within my organization? And third, if I know the trends, if I have the tools, do I know the techniques to deploy them? Trends, tools, and techniques. That trio is important for the end of a transformation. And for this to happen, organization must first be in control of the trends. Now, what are the trends and what strategies can pharma companies in the next two to five years deploy? First, um, treating patients as partners. Treating patients as partners would mean involving them throughout the value chain. And that would start from pre-discovery to discovery in R&D, clinical trials, moving up into manufacturing, and then finally, once it is launched and commercialization, there would need to be a feedback loop that closes it. You would have heard of EPRO, Electronic Patient Recorded Outcome. EPRO is a great way to engage with patient and get the data. There are, there are startups all across the globe that are, make, that are making amazing platforms which are driven by AI. Um, case in point, patch.ai. That organization allows a very easy way to capture the data from patients, which is EPRO. Now what that does, there's a plethora of data that you are able to use for your research. The question comes in, if the data is so unstructured, how am I going to be able to make sense of it? And that's where there are tools and platforms that make sense of unstructured RWE data as well. So, um, an American startup has now anonymized all the data that you get from RWU sources. Even they have the tags which make it more authentic from where the data is coming from so that you can use it to get your regulatory approval later. So the whole chain is getting digitized. The opportunity for pharma to become patient-centric is not something that you need to aspire for. It is something that you need to act upon. And it is difficult if you look at 70, 20, 10 quantum to always have 70% enhancing our core, core of the, of the revenue function. But there is 20% which is incremental capability. There is 10% which is exponential. And all of that has to have a digital mandate to it. All of this would have to have a top leadership backing and sponsorship within the organization to drive the change. I wanted to talk about three more levers aside of looking at patient as partner and um, looking at RW data and unstructured data being making sense and insights that we can use for the value chain. Number two is about manufacturing and supply chain. There's a session coming up and, and I think in the morning session we, we did hear about having industry 4.0 and, and 5G making tremendous impact in how we improve the efficiency. So organizations at the shop floor must be able to have lights out plan where you are able to identify what's happening on the plant without it actually being having to always rely on the talent. Because you are able to have talent which are cross-pollinated rather than having a specific person only working in a four quantity, for example, only that part. We now need to train our staff to be more technologically savvy because if there's a decision support system that they need to use, they need to be trained, they need to be able to use that system. And finally, working with technology players, hyperscalers, and uh, disruptors. Working in, in an ecosystem makes the chances of you moving the needle alone um, versus doing it together is a lot more easier. Um, if you look at the, the recent funding that has happened, not only for the India Health Pack and MedTech players, but also, also globally, there's a lot which is software as a medical device. If you see software as a medical device, is taking billions of uh, investment from all across the private equity and, and multiple players. I'm aware that regulatory are now treating any software that has got connotation to medical data is also required to be treated as almost like a medical device. Right? So it would need to go through all the checks and balances. However, there are advances that make that process also simplified. Um, so summing up the, the trends that we need to be aware of, are three or four trends. Tools, uh, cloud going vertical is the first tool and platform that one must be aware of. So far we have always thought our industry is very niche and we need to make everything from scratch that isn't available in the market. However, 
in our corporate function, there are multiple processes that are not very different to how other organizations are. And what that requires is a verticalized solution for pharma, which is available today. You need not build it, you need not buy it. It is as a service with a limited configuration, and you are able to automate. And in double digit, you are able to unlock efficiency across your value chain. So use cloud, verticalized cloud, as, as one big lever, one tool and platform to get into the journey. AI and machine learning, you would hear, and most of these technologies work together. AI, you would need cloud to work, because the data would need to be stored somewhere, need to be shared somewhere. There comes the another issue of sharing. And it's a big issue, especially when we are treating with medical data. Um, the next big thing, if I purely talk about the future of pharma, where we are having to share data, but we have fear of what might happen with me sharing the data, there is going to be um, a fully homomorphic encryption. I mean, consultants like using jargons, but what that means is I'm able to use the data without, and the data is encrypted, and I want to share it with you, and you run analytics model on it and get a summary out of it. Until the full process is completed, you are not seeing the data. The data remains encrypted. So you are not having access to the real data, but when the final outcome is derived, it is that which is converted into the plain text. This radically changes the infosec and the cyber concerns around, can I share my data in a controlled environment? So when you go cloud and AI, look at data sharing in a controlled way, which is now changing at a, at a rapid pace. And these areas are going to be front and center in the future of pharma, going beyond the pill, going around the pill. There are other areas like metaverse, which are still far. Um, however, if you look at uh, Spry, for example, another uh, physiotherapy startup in India, which has got a fantastic funding probably last couple of weeks, what they do, they are able to use um, virtual reality and augmented reality of how the patient is actually performing the exercises versus how it is supposed to be done, and it is patent pending. Uh, there is fantastic integration of that with the entire clinic management, appointment, um, settlement with the, with the other organization and stakeholder in the system. So there is a platform here. There are all of these nuances of AI, cloud, and, and virtual reality that are coming together. So the world is going to be a convergence of a few technologies which you would need to be able to, whatever is right according to the, to the philosophy of the organization, be able to drive forward. And that leaves me with the last point around techniques. So we are aware, we are aware of the trends, we are aware of the tools, cloud and, and some of the others that we spoke about. How do we go about doing it? Right? So the first thing is to have <coughs> a common transformation language around your organization. If every department has a separate definition of transformation, it is going to be that much more difficult for you to drive uh, any such initiative. Have a common language of transformation. What it means is it has to be centered around uh, insights, experience, platform, and connectivity. These are the four fundamental elements. Insights, experience, platform, and connectivity. If you make sure that your transformation is centered on these pillars, you're likely to have uh, ability to hit the sweet spot from what your ambition is. Um, finally, if I leave with uh, an area which is which is very close to close to my heart is, is the change management uh, in a digital transformation journey. Uh, making sure that we are able to take our organization along, we are able to have right training and talent and culture. Uh, that shift is going to be very sensitive, very difficult to drive. Do we carve out a separate organization? Do we have a COE set up? How is going to be the operating model? There's always a, a concern about shadow IT, especially with the emergence of low-code, no-code platforms, for example. Because if you are able to have a use case built in a matter of days and weeks versus months and years, um, and especially with business guys, rather than having all the IT guys all the time work on it. 
So how is the governance mechanism going to work around the new fusion needs that our organizations are going to have to work with? Um, putting all of this together, uh, yeah, these are exciting times, um, not for all industries, more for pharma industries. I see uh, the, the 2047 vision that was being discussed on, on, the, on the panel earlier becoming true. Uh, it requires all of us to work together. It requires uh, the stakeholders to come together and have a digital integration strategies identified. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you all for listening in. Thank you very much.